Hi, good morning. My name is Kevin Binder. I'm an area director with Agility Recovery, and today we're going to talk about how to better prepare your business and recover from a disaster following an unforeseen event. Good morning, everybody. Well, Trevor, thank you very much for allowing Agility to come in and present to everybody in the room. It's a great opportunity, hopefully, for us to share a little bit about preparedness and, and my goal for the presentation, the time that I spend in front of you is to give you some actionable items and takeaways that you can take back to your organization and just help you get better prepared. So if something does happen where there is a tornado or severe weather or any other type of disaster that impacts your business, that you're better prepared to recover and ultimately get your business and your employees and your operations going again. Uh, quick 20 second overview of agility for folks just to understand who we are is uh, we rescue businesses after a disaster, so we don't store data in the cloud, uh, but what we do do is bring in resources such as mobile offices, deliver portable generators and fuel, we get your internet and phone restored following a disaster, and also supply you with all the technology needed to resume your business, such as computers, servers, and phones, and things of that nature. So we've been doing it 25 years, we've literally rescued thousands of businesses, we, and we've never failed. And rest assured, uh, you're all in good hands with uh, Delaney Gibson because they're members of Agility, so they have some great redundancies in place on their own. But if those uh, failovers fail, or those backups fail, now they have additional resources to, to use and keep their agency up and running so they can respond to your calls. So again, my goal is to help you understand a little bit about the basics of business continuity and disaster recovery. Uh, take some simple steps back to your organization uh, to just be better prepared if and when something happens. Um, disaster recovery, and, and when most folks think of disasters and uh, situations, they think of a, a picture like this. And this is a, a picture of West Liberty, Kentucky, where a tornado struck, I think this was a couple years ago, maybe 2012, if I recall right. And West Liberty, Kentucky is a very small town, uh, one road in, one road out, two banks, um, small government. Tornado came in, uh, ripped apart both banks on Main Street, and also ripped apart the uh, 911 call center. So thankfully for those businesses and that local municipality, all three were members of Agility and were able to get back up and running, but uh, this is just a, a picture of the devastation a tornado can do in a matter of seconds. Interestingly enough, uh, disasters happen every day, uh, and most of the disasters that we see aren't regional events like you see on the Weather Channel or CNN or on Channel 5. Uh, there are individual isolated events like fires or the sprinkler system goes off like I see here. It could be some type of computer virus or some type of rat infestation. It's true, we've had these before where we've recovered members whose facilities have been infested by rats. So disasters come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, and usually there's the disasters that you don't have time to prepare for that impact your business the most. So these are the five steps that we'll quickly go over from everything from assessing your risk to uh, understanding how to reach out to the media such as Channel 5 and getting in front of them to let them know what the status is of your business to testing your plan. So without further ado, we'll kind of jump right in and, and after each step, I'll go over an actual uh, recovery that Agility performed on behalf of one of our, our members. So uh, the first is assessing your risk both internally and externally. Take a look at where your business is located. So for us, obviously, all of us here in the Northeast, uh, we're prone to hurricanes, we're prone to earthquakes like we had a few years ago. Uh, tornadoes, the one that touched down in Western Mass a couple of years ago. So we'll get everything, even though maybe we haven't had a tornado in quite some time. It's a good idea to prepare, understand where we're located uh, physically. You know, again, uh, where's your your, your your location, your facility actually located? What time, of, what type of building are you in? Uh, are you in a facility that's in a high rise where uh, maybe you have neighbors and if they have a disaster, is that going to impact your business? What if their sprinkler system goes off? The next thing you know, your facility or your floor of that office is suddenly flooded. Um, what happens as a result of uh, the construction of your facility or um, uh, again, that your neighbor, your supply chain is impacted by a disaster. So uh, if I'm in the West Coast, I'm maybe more concerned about earthquakes. If I'm in the Midwest, maybe I'm more concerned about tornadoes. But just taking a look, historically speaking, what type of events have happened in the past, what could happen in the future, and that will allow you just to be in a better position to ultimately recover when something happens. Um, this is an interesting story where uh, Alamogordo, New Mexico, it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, nothing ever happens in Alamogordo, one would think. Uh, 
uh, interesting story with them. We represent a bank uh, in New Mexico, and uh, this is all caught on camera. So the facility here, you can see, uh, that's their building in the background there. Um, the bank's on the first floor, and directly above them is a law firm. And this happened uh, maybe on a Friday night or a Saturday night. This is all caught on camera. But a disgruntled employee or, or former uh, customer or, or colleague uh, broke into the attorney's office and within a matter of about six minutes set two fires. Uh, as a result, the sprinkler systems in the bank did what they were supposed to do. They went off, uh, they put a bunch of water in the facility. Unfortunately for the bank, that flooded out their branch and their operations center. They didn't have another location to send their customers to, so they needed to call us up and, and we delivered a mobile office and by the time Monday rolled around, they were able to uh, continue banking, open up their doors to their customers. So uh, this is something that this particular bank never expected to happen. It wasn't a regional event that brought down their business. It was a disgruntled employee or customer of this law firm who broke into the, uh, the law firm and set those, those two fires within minutes. So uh, everybody's at risk, especially so if you share a building uh, with a neighbor. Uh, the second step is assessing your, your critical business functions. <coughs> what functions of your business are most critical? Is it human resources? Is it sales? Is it customer service? Uh, is it your call center? Is it your accounts billable or payable? Uh, take a look at your functions of your organization, which groups, which departments need to get back up and running first so you can continue to serve your customers so they can reach out to you. Understand what employees of your organization are most critical. Everybody thinks they're critical, including myself, probably not to my organization, but nonetheless, everybody, everybody thinks they're critical, right? And it's, they're not. Within the first zero to six hours, and the, the seven to 12 hours, and 13 to 24 hours, uh, different people need to come online first. If I'm a chip and plan Gibson, I want to make sure my, my call center and my, uh, my sales reps and uh, my claims folks are able to answer the phones. Because if I'm impacted by a regional disaster, most likely a good amount of my clients are as well. So it's imperative that they're back up and running. Uh, is it important that Chip's marketing team is up and running within the first six hours? Probably not. But he does need his phones to be operational. Um, understanding how long you can withstand an interruption following those events. Uh, is it zero to 24 hours? Is it two to three days that you can be down? Is it longer than that? Uh, as Chip mentioned earlier, the longer you're down, the more revenue you lose the chances of the likelihood of you coming back up online uh, and restoring your business uh, become more and more slim by the day. So take a look at your organization if you haven't already and document and let folks know within your organization what their roles are, what their expectations are, and when, if possible, they can get back to work as quickly as they can to, to help the business out. This is a particular, um, Holton Meat is a, a big meat packing uh, company out in Illinois and a few years back they had a massive uh, summer storm uh, just left a bunch of people without power and that's their facility there and, and when they became members of Agility they weren't so concerned about losing power uh, they should have been but they weren't at the time they were more concerned about getting their their back office their administrative roles back up and running so their accounts billing payable uh, HR those types of groups they just wanted to have the phones operational for their customers to call in at all times uh, they were impacted by the storm, suddenly their entire facility, which holds about 50,000 square feet of frozen food, um, was without power. So they could operate independently without power as long as they kept those freezer doors shut for three days. They realized after talking with the utilities that they were going to be without power for much longer than three days. They didn't want to take a $10 million loss. Uh, they also, and their insurance company probably didn't want to write them a check for $10 million either. So uh, what they did is they called Agility and they said, well, we have a rather large uh, freezer here that if we don't get this food frozen or maintain uh, how frozen it is, we're probably going to have to have a big barbecue, right? So they called us up and we ended up getting a, a tractor trailer sized generator delivered in about 10 hours to their site. And they plugged that into their facility and they were able to save about $10 million worth of frozen food. So. Um, it's just, again, preparing for an unexpected and understanding how long you can be down. <laughs> uh, the third step is creating a crisis communication plan. So it, it's making sure that the stakeholders of your organization, both internal and external, know their roles and expectations and responsibilities. 
um, ensure redundancies are, are there in existence. So uh, if your phone and internet connectivity fail, do you have a, a backup uh, internet connection feeding your office? If phones fail for some reason, are your phones in the cloud, like Delane Gibson, are they, uh, if you lose your, your phone systems, are you then out of luck? So just make sure you have backup systems in place. Um, do you have some type of phone tree or alert tool that uh, if you do lose communications or your uh, phone or internet connectivity or networks at your office fails, do you have a way to reach out to not only your employees and letting them know that some type of disruption or disaster has taken place, but do you have a way to reach out to your vendors, your partners, and your customers as well because they want to know that you're down and, and when to expect that you'll be back up and running again. Um, preparing a media communications plan. Uh, if your business is impacted, uh, do you know how to reach out to Channel 5 or the other stations to be able to get on their tickler at the bottom of the screen to let people know that uh, your business is down or uh, there is some type of situation that's impacted your company? Um, do you know, uh, if, if you do have a disaster at your business, say for example you have a fire and Channel 5 shows up uh, with their news trucks and they want to interview you, um, about the status of your business and how that's impacting your customers and your employees and everything else, well, you don't want just anybody from your organization being able to talk to Channel 5. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you want to make sure that the right person at your company, uh, a designated authority, if you will, can relay the right information to the, the person that's coming to interview you. So you don't want just anybody, again, being able to uh, relay information because he or she might not give the right information, right? So it's important that the right person, whether it's the head of the company or the head of PR or marketing, whatever the case may be, you have a one point of contact that can properly relay that message out. Uh, I like this particular example because it, we represent a company called the Saskatchewan Government Insurance Agency. And I said that fairly well, which is a surprise. Um, so they, uh, it was interesting. Their disaster uh, wasn't one that we saw on the news. Uh, it wasn't a regional event or a fire or a flood that impacted their facility. Uh, what happened to them was uh, their phone systems and their computers are all networked, so their data is in the cloud, their phone system is a VoIP system, uh, it's in the cloud. Uh, they were suddenly hit by a virus. So all their computer systems and their phone systems, within a matter of seconds, just shut down. There was no way they could use their computers, their PCs, they couldn't laptops, they couldn't make outbound calls, they couldn't receive incoming calls. So what they did is they activated an alert notification system through us, but one that they had, um, that allowed them to send out a text message to the crisis management team, the key stakeholders of that organization, and said, we need to gather in conference room A, for example, within 15 minutes. So they pushed out that message and that crisis communications team, that crisis management team all gathered in the conference room to figure out what their plan of attack was going to be. Because they realized ridding themselves, removing that virus is going to take some time. So in the meantime, they called Agility. What we did is we shipped them about 200 laptops with VoIP phone systems and everything else that they were able to resume until they removed that virus from their system. So again, it's just having those backups in place. Uh, more and more we're seeing data breaches and viruses and things of that nature attack our network. So just make sure you have a redundant communication system in place because if you don't, similar to uh, this particular insurance agency, um, it's going to be very difficult to reach out to folks and let them know if you're experiencing some type of event.